subject of our lesson this morning is Injustice and Hope. And our lesson is taken from Genesis, the 21st chapter, verse 8 through 21, and our background scripture is the same. And I'd like to read our verses. And God heard the voice of the lad, and the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven, and said unto her, What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God hath heard the voice of the lad, where he is. 18. Arise, lift up thy lad, and hold him in thy hand, for I will make him a great nation. 19. And God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. And she went and filled the bowl with water and gave the lad drink. Twenty. And God whispered the lad and he came and dwelt in the wilderness. Our key verse, we read together. God heard the voice of the lad, and the angel of the Lord called to Hagar out of heaven and said unto her, What gave it thee, Hagar? God has heard the voice of the man where he is. Arise, lift up the man, and go hold it in your hands. While I will be with your nation. Genesis 21, 17, and 18. Now, all of us in here know the story of Abraham. But I'm going to talk a little bit until we get to that verse. Abraham, he said, Abraham was common for righteousness. He trusted God so much. He believed in God and he trusted God. Whatever God told him to do, he would do. So Abraham did not have children. Abraham and Sarah did not have children. They had children at an old age. 
So God promised Abraham that he would be a great nation, that his descendants would be like the sands of the sea and the stars in the sky. But at the time, he didn't have any children. So Sarah wanted to help out. And that, in the ancient time, it was normal for a handmaiden to have children and the, the mistress could not have children. So Sarah gave Hagar to Abraham. And Hagar bears um, Abraham a son. But God said the promise would come with, from Abraham and Sarah, not Abraham and Isaac. So after this happened, and when in Hagar can see you, you know, sometimes you can stick out foot in our mouth. Sarah was, he, she despised her because she was carrying Abraham's child. And she was bearing a, a child for Abraham that she could not have. So she treated Hagar very, what, bad? Yeah. Uh, hateful. I said jealous. Jealousy can make you do some ugly things. So yeah. she treated him very bad. So she ran away. And you can find that in the 16th chapter of Genesis. She ran away, but God sent an angel and brought her back. Tell her, tell her to go back to her mistress and do whatever your mistress said, because you are in the hands of your mistress. Whatever she say, you do it. But the seed that you are carrying will be a great nation, because this is Abraham's seed. Um, so she went back, and she buried him a son. And now, God had also promised that Abraham and Sarah would have a child. And we're up to this point now where Abraham and Sarah did. God promised her that she would conceive, and she did in her old age. And she laughed. <laughs> Me? I have a child in my old age? Y'all know who we would say. We would say the same thing. Who, me? Are you kidding? I'm, what, 90 years old and I'm going to have a child? So she laughed. And God heard her. And when, when the angel of the Lord told her about it, she said, no, I didn't laugh. I didn't laugh. But yes, she did. But at the set appointed time, next year, we will have a child. She did. That's God promised. See, God promised us things, but we, we want to help God along the way. And, and we say we trust him, but... I trust you, Lord, but I, I think I'm going to go a little further. I'm going to do it before you get there. And that's what she did. So now, Sarah bare Abraham's son, Isaac. And Isaac means laugh. Ishmael means the Lord hear. And Isaac's, Isaac's name means laugh. You know, names mean something. We can name our children all along. Name sometimes a child can't pronounce the own name, but name means something. I'm not saying that those long names or whatever doesn't isn't good, but names mean something. In the Bible, name means something. So now we are up to our lesson today. It said, and the child grew. So this is Isaac, and the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast the same day Isaac was weaned. And Sarah, the son of Haggai, the Egyptian, and, okay, and Sarah saw the son of Haggai, the Egyptian, which she had bared unto Abraham mocking. Now, I don't know if you would consider mocking. I would say teasing. Well, what would you say? Or laughing at, or pick, or we say picking at my child. That's what we would say. Um, he's picking at my child. And the worst person to see this was Sarah. Because see now, she's already upset because she was already upset because another woman had a baby for her husband. But hey, who did that? No, who did that? She did. She did. It was her she sister. took her maid to Abraham to bear a child. So now, like I said, sometimes we put our foot in our mouth, sometimes we, we kick our own self in the backside. So, so she, I would say teasing, but it says mocking here. And now he's no longer a lad. I mean, he's no longer a young child. He's about 17, the Bible says. He's about 17 years old. Because when Isaac was weaned, he was about three years old. That was the time that he did not have to 
applied to his mother's milk, depended on his mother's milk to live. So he's about three years old, and in the Bible days, that's when the children were weaned. So now listen what it says right here in verse 10. What Sarah said, wherefore she said unto Abraham, cast out this bond woman and her son. For listen to listen to how she said, for the son of the bond woman shall not be heir with my son, even Isaac. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. That's my son. Do you want me to cast my son out? But listen what God said. Now listen what God said. That's what Sarah said. And God said, Abraham, let it not be grievous by thy sight because of the lad and because of the bond woman. And all, listen y'all, and all that Sarah, Sarah said, and all that Sarah had said unto thee, hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall the seed be called. And also the son of the bondwoman I will make a great nation because of thy seed. God ways are not like our ways. Our ways are not like God ways. So you yeah, asked Sarah was all right with it. She wanted she knew she couldn't have children. She was all right with it because she wanted to get to say to have a baby for Abraham to make Abraham happy. But once she had her own child, that's when she started getting changed in her mind. I don't want this child with my child, but this child like take all the blessings from my child. And that's when she went to Abraham and tell him that this, this lady, this boy can't stay here. That's true. That's true. Um, that is true. Somehow I don't want to make it right. It says that, listen here. You, you're right, you're not wrong. Disappointingly, Sarah sounds like the wicked stepmother. Y'all know I'm um, Cinderella mother and how she treat them and, and um, Hansel and Gretel mother, how they treat them. The food was getting low, so she sent the churn out in the woods to eat them, but enough food for her. So she sounded like a stepmother, and we'd, we'd jump all over Sarah. Now, you know Sarah been wrong to send that child that, to do that to this lady, um, for miss her handmaid and her child. But it says, okay, where am I? What? No, uh, no, I'm, I'm going to read this thing. Disappointingly, Sarah sounds like the wicked stepmother here. Jealousy, pride, fear, and all fear all played a part in Sarah's dis disregarding for Ishmael. For yet, and yet God worked, listen, God worked through Sarah. Even though we think she's a wicked stepmother, God worked through Abraham. That's who he promised the descendants to. Isaac. That's his seed, that's his son, Hagar, that's the woman that bare the first child, and Ishmael for his purpose. God do what he want to do when he want to get something done. I don't care how wrong we think it is, God ways are right. He does not deal in fairness, he deals in righteousness. Oh, that's so unfair. But he told him, God told Abraham, Talking into everything that Sarah has said. Sarah opened the door for God's blessing to come through. It could have been another way, but Abraham get rid of, get rid of um, Hagar and Ishmael. Because I don't want Ishmael to take what belongs to Isaac. Isaac is being your son. That's you and Hagar's son. So get rid of Ishmael and the bond woman. And God said, hearken into everything your wife has said. Does that sound fair to y'all? Y'all may as well say, no, it don't sound fair, but it is because this is God's purpose. This is, how, this is what his plans were, and God's plan is going to come through regardless of what we think. Just like the, the pandemic now and things that are happening in, in, on the earth. I mean, snowbound, fire, flood, all these things. Oh, where is God? Right there where he always been. Everything that happens, God knows about it. So we can say what we want and we can say it shouldn't be like this and it should be like that, but that's God's purpose. Hearken, I like this part here. Y'all watch my hand now. 
Hopping and do everything Sarah said. Everything your wife said, hopping and do. I, I love that verse. Hopping and do everything that Sarah says. Mark it. Hopping and do it. Do it as if she said, she said, go jump off this church. You go off that church. And you jump off. Anybody want to comment on Mark? The last laugh. God gets the last laugh. We can laugh as much as we want, but God is going to get the last laugh. Yes. It's important to know that that's where the nation of Islam came from. Right. Yes. God told me he was going to be a great nation. But from my studying, Ishmael and Isaac became enemies. The tribe. The tribe. And that's right. Even to this day. All right. Okay. <laughs> They were brothers, but their descendants became enemies and they fight against each other. That's God's purpose too. They did it, so that's God's purpose. Okay, so la a lasting promise. God told the um, Haggai that a great nation would come from her son. Now, Abraham, and, and in this part, you get mad with Abraham. Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle, a, a bottle of water, and I'm quite sure it was, more, it was more than that, and gave Haggai and put it on her shoulder and sent her and the boy away. And she wandered in Beshir. Beshir. She wandered there, and they said, when all the food was gone, when all the water was spent, and she knew, what's going to happen to us? What's going to happen to me and my son? And she sat down on the ground. And sometimes God does not allow. It's right here in our face. And God don't allow us to see it until he's ready. But she sat down and she knew the boy was going to die because there wasn't nothing else she could do. So she set the boy away off from her because she did not want to see her son die. God hears. And God heard the voice of the lad. And who was crying? Who was, who was doing the crying and fretting over the son? And I was, but God heard the lad. What it was tell, what it tells us here that all the time God been taking care of this lad. And I hear when this lad cry. I hear his plea. I know he's hungry. I know he's thirsty. And it said, For God heard the voice of the lad where he is. Arise. This is the angel. The angel God sent an angel to talk to Haggai and ask him, What's what's wrong with you? You know, what, what, what's wrong? And she told him. And, and and he said to her, Arise, lift up the lad and hold him in thine hand, for I will make him a great nation. God's help. And God opened, opened the eyes. The well was right there. The well was right there. But until God opened our eyes to certain things, we'll never see. We'll never see un injustice until God opened our eyes. We'll never see people hurting, hungry. Until God open our eye, and they can be, uh, we can have a next door neighbor hurting, sick, right. depressed. Until God open our eyes to it, we'll never see. And when she opened her eye, there was a well, and she filled the bottle with water and gave gave the lad to drink. And God was with the lad. Okay, this is my last verse. And he grew and dwelled in the wilderness and became an archer. Haggai, it doesn't say this in our lesson, but for my study, and Haggai returned to Egypt, where she came from, and her son became a, what do you call it, a nomad, living in the wilderness. He became an archer. And, it, and being an archer at that time was good because it was good for, to survive hunting, hunting and stuff, and it was good for battle. So, God hears us when we cry. God knows exactly what we're going through. Even though when we don't think it's right, it's right that we trust in God. But our first thing we have to do is trust him. He promised he's going to do this and he promised he's going to do that. And the promises, the promise don't come when we want it to come. But God promised, keep trusting. Keep trusting him. And if we, if we look at, at, at his word, all the prophecy. Yeah, I think all. I might, might not be a few. But has been fulfilled. If you 
you go back and search the prophets and, and what they say God would do, even before they even knew about Jesus, all of these prophecies was fulfilled. If God promised it, he can't lie. Uh, the poor man, I face it, the poor man, he can't lie. And he promises something, he got to do it. And even if he take years and years and years to do it, now I can lie and get away with it, you know, get, get away, get by with it, but I'm not getting away. But God can't lie. If he promises us he's going to do something, he's going to do it. But our job is to trust him. God promised Abraham these things, and it was going to come through the seed of Sarah, Abraham, Sarah, and Isaac. Now, my thing was, when I first really started getting into the Bible, I could, not, I could never understand why the promise did not come through Esau. Because Jacob was terrible. He was a trickster. He was, he, he, I said he, he was a thief. That's what I said now. I said, so why God, God, why you let it come through? Uh, Jacob is not Esau. But what did I tell you before? God be, he ain't my be. My be, he ain't God be. And if God said this is the way it's going to be, I just have to accept it and go on with it. Yes, ma'am. Um, I just wanted to know why, the, well, why would you say Jacob was a thief? Hold it, please, ma'am. Oh. I, I was interested in knowing why you why you would say that Jacob was a thief. Because he stole the birthright from his brother. I mean, the brother gave it up for the food. Well, then now. there it is. He he gave it up. But, and but he told him exactly what he wanted. Okay, and then and then the other time when when they, the, the the mother and him they tricked the father because the father couldn't see. He was a trickster, but then in return he was tricked back. Yeah. Right. What he done? So that's why I said trickster and a thief. I mean, well, I shouldn't call him a thief. Okay. Because it was given to him. Yes. Yeah. Okay. He, he made a bargain. It might not seem like a fair bargain, but he, you know, Esau was hungry, and he said to him, "Okay, I'll give you something to eat, but you know, to, I, it's going to cost you your birthright." Yeah, so he gave it. He gave it away. Yeah, okay. he did give it away. And he was a trickster. I was a trickster. I was a thief. Okay, so, thank you, man. <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody want to comment on all this? Stole a thief. I tell you. <laughs> he stole it, so that's a thief. He sold it. Well, you said sold it or Esau sold it for a pot of stew. Sold it. <laughs> oh, so I thought you said he stole. No, no, no. I said he did. I'll, I'll, I'll take it. 
Any, any other comment from our lesson? Sunday school is discussion. Been studying this, and I said it was a parting hand. I said you, you feel like Sarah was his wicked stepmother, but in, in a sense, I look at Abraham and say, Chuck, she been a weak man. Anything? <laughs> anything Sarah said, you did it. He hearkened. He hearkened. <laughs> anything Sarah said. She, we'll do everything Sarah said. <laughs> And 
and, and, and this is what God wants us to do. When we see injustice, always remember, there may be injustice, but there's hope right behind. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I was just saying, I find it interesting that our Sunday school lessons uh, at the beginning of the year, starting uh, last, last week and then this week here, are really um, exploring the idea of um, family conflict, especially as it pertains to um, jealousy. You know, last week it was about Cain and Abel and what happened in that case. Now here it is with Abraham and the two women that he had children with, and, you know, one's his wife, and, you know, it was his wife's idea, and now the children grow up, and she really, in a lot of ways, um, you know, she really didn't care whether um, Hagar and Ishmael lived or died. And if it wasn't for the provision of the Lord, they could have very well starved to death and, and died of thirst and hunger out there in the wilderness. But it was because of God's care and God's concern. And um, God, in a lot of ways, keeping the peace in Abraham's household because he knew that it wasn't going to be a peaceful situation if Hagar stayed around. That's right, that's right. You know, so I just find it interesting that at the beginning of the year, we're really exploring um, family and how jealousy and um, can lend to conflict in the family dynamic. Okay. Um, unit one for this um, December was all justice. Right. And then um, January is all justice too. Now in yeah. February we go to something different, but we are talking about justice, fairness, and just justice and judge and pride, um, obedience, kindness, righteousness. So we are talking about justice the whole month of um, December and January. God, He's a just God. He's a just God, and He does not like injustice. That, that goes against His principle. He wants us to treat each other with respect and fairness. Um, um, and, and, and he also said to love your brother like you love yourself, your enemy like your neighbor like you love yourself. And our neighbor can stretch from here to Timbuktu, and he's still our neighbor. Whenever you see someone in need and you can help, that's your neighbor. So injustice and hope. If there's no more comment about our lesson this morning, next Sunday, Reverend Torres Richardson will be teaching our Sunday school lesson for us. And um, let's read our prayer. No, um, if, uh, okay. Let me, let's read the, the conclusion. Hey, I had a difficult life. But as Ishmael's name reminds us, God cares. Abraham, God, who loves both Isaac and Ishmael, and the Lord is the Lord of all creation. He cares for all people, and he keeps his promise. He hears all cry of injustice, and he responds with a message of hope. The message must be preached, taught, and lived by his people before, before a watching world which is desperate for a better story than the division that so often defines our life. Listen to this. When we hear, come with us now, when we hear, the world might begin to believe that God also hear. The world is watching the Christians. The world is watching us. And when we, when we do wrong or when we do injustice, they say, well, hey, that's the kind of God they serve. They serve a God and they can do anything they want. But when we do, like that commercial said, when we do better, the world will do better. So when we, when we have God and we live it up and we talk it and we, we share it with others, then the, the world will begin to hear also because they see it in us. Okay, let's read our prayer. God who cares, raise our voice to you. Strengthen our hope so the world may have hope in you through our faithful witness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our thought to remember, call out to God. Call him, y'all. Don't call me. Call God whenever.
visit to us with us this morning. Um, Y'all yeah, know we have members in our Sunday school that is sick. I don't know of any death in, in our church family. Any sickness? Anybody want to call anybody name? Okay, so we'll go from there. But um, I do have death from a friend. A friend of mine died yesterday. Um, Sylvester Parson. Y'all know him? Who oh, Parson died yesterday. Okay. He's the brother of 